Hello and welcome to the video. You join me here today with a canoe in the background. Now this is pretty exciting. The reason we've got this is this weekend we're heading up to the Lake District where the plan is to do a source to see of the River Derwent. And I wanted a craft that was going to be up to the job, therefore I've borrowed this off a friend of mine. It is an old town canoe. These things are pretty much as classic as you could possibly get in the canoeing world. This one has been manufactured in the USA. It is sturdy and solid as anything and should be up to the journey ahead. Now I'm not going to do this and pretend to know a great deal about canoes because I don't. Ironically I'm qualified on canoes but I very rarely use them. Um, however there are a few features about this one I quite like. We're going to go through it. We're going to go through some of the bits and pieces we've taken this weekend with us as well. Uh, and yeah hopefully you can join us along for that journey and uh, check out the video when it actually gets released in a few days time. And as we start towards the back of the canoe the one thing I did notice when I picked this up is the airbags. However it has just occurred to me these aren't actually airbags. I think what these are are blocks of foam. There's one in the back and there's one in the front. And what that means is if this does flip when it's on the water, the canoe can't actually sink to the bottom of the lake, reservoir, river, whatever it is we find ourselves on, uh, which is always incredibly useful. I've always used these or had them in as airbags where they're full of air, they're inflatable basically. Uh, whereas yeah, these are actually solid blocks, which I'm not sure what the benefits or advantages are of that, but either way, our canoe will not tip over and sink to the bottom thanks to these bags, one at the back one at the front as well you can just see it just in there it is of course two seats of two we've got one seat here at the front and we've also got the one back there as well towards the back of the canoe as well whoever's at the back of the canoe is going to be more on uh, steering and that sort of thing whoever's at the front is more on power and obviously checking we're going in the right direction as well and like all canoes, you've obviously got that nice solid oak yoke in the middle too, which is technically designed for carrying it on your shoulders uh, with your neck. So I'm going to see if that works in a moment. We'll see if I can carry this off that yoke. Let's find out. Please do comment below when I end up doing this completely wrong. Let's check it out. There we go, with a bit of difficulty I've managed to actually pick up this thing. I didn't think that was going to be possible, to be honest. I feel like I've not positioned myself in the best way. I dropped the weight back down. Okay, let's put this down. <laughs> That was actually quite surprising considering how heavy this canoe is. I did actually manage to get it on my shoulders and onto my back too and carry it kind of reasonably. The only thing was that I didn't move out of the way is the paddles. They were still strapped in the middle and blocking me from actually positioning myself properly underneath the canoe. Believe it or not, it's one of the first times I've ever used a yoke like that on a canoe, especially a two person one that feels exceptionally heavy lifting it on and off the car. But yeah, somehow if you get underneath it and you get it right, that weight distribution just makes it a little bit easier to carry. So those are the main features of our canoe, tried and tested. On our journey down the River Doe, and there are going to be a couple of key bits of kit that are coming with us for the adventure. One of those things is our Berghaus Kingorm tent. I absolutely love this thing. We bought it in a sale uh, two or three years ago. It was meant to be about £300, and because it had been sat out all season, I got it for, I think, around about 40 quid, something like that. The only difference is with this is the outside is a bit faded with UV light. However, it hasn't affected the waterproofing of it at all, and we've been using it on and off for those couple of years. So this thing's bomb-proof, really good for bad weather, and there's been some really strong winds through here recently. So having a really decent tent is going to make a difference. This does need repacking before it goes though because as you can see currently the poles are on the outside which is no good. Now this is going to be the biggest piece of kit we probably take with us. In fact it's actually reasonably heavy too but not as heavy as it could be. These are Robins Down sleeping bags. In this uh, stuff sack there are two of them and they're currently zipped together to make like a giant down double sleeping bag. It's like the best thing in the world for a good night's sleep. Uh, they are a little bit heavier just because they're quite a high quality down. I think 600 down. Um, but at the same time, you can't really compromise a good night's sleep, especially when you're out doing something as strenuous 
dangerous as canoeing down a river and trying to find the sea from the source. So yeah, our Robans down sleeping bags will be coming with us and uh, yeah, looking forward to using those and having sort of a, a snuggly night's sleep underneath the stars. Of course, goes without saying, life jackets. Uh, this is a Crusader one I've had for a fair few years now and just kind of I like it, it works, it's quite good. Uh, it will stop me from drowning, which is always good. Uh, and then we've borrowed one of our Aquatec ones from our paddleboard center down the road as well. We use these things for hire, and to be honest, they cost about 40 pounds, and they're pretty good quality for that as well. So nice zip on the front, not too bulky either, uh, so they don't really get in the way, uh, especially when we're canoeing as well, which is really, really useful. Sleeping mats, these are three quarters. Not a big fan of these, to be honest. Um, they're OEX, we've had them for years. I've got, I don't know, 10, 11 of them maybe. Like, way too many to count. Uh, and they don't really do the job. And I know what you're wondering. Why don't you just go buy new sleeping mats? I'm, if I'm honest, I'm kind of wondering that too. And last but not least, this has come up in many videos before, this is my MSR Whisper Light uh, International. This is one of the best stoves that I've ever seen around. There's plenty on the market and people swap and change their stoves all the time. I've had this one for the best part of four years now and it's still exceptional. I would stand by MSR stoves any day of the week, obviously using performance gas with it to make it hopefully a little bit quicker as we burn. And then just the standard aluminium pan. I'm not a big fan of buying pots and pans and all that sort of thing. I've got a few, they kind of work. Sometimes I like using my kettle, but it's just a little bit more compact for the journey. We really don't want to load this thing with too much kit, only because it makes it heavier, but also it's going to make it a little bit harder to depack at the other end as well. It also means if we capsize too, which is a possibility, you've got to consider, you don't want too much kit because it's just going to go everywhere. Um, and that is going to come on to the next point actually of packing. Obviously for this journey, we will be using a fair few dry bags. This is one of the main ones we'll be taking with us. This is going to house the sleeping bags. But yeah, the idea is going to be all our kit will go within sort of two or three big dry bags, really. Hopefully, if the worst does happen and we do capsize, all of our kit is just going to be in a couple of dry bags tied in to the deck of the canoe. It should be a pretty exciting journey. and I'm really looking forward to it. It's something a little bit different. I've not been on a canoe expedition for a long, long time, probably with scouts actually, so it's been years. Um, so yeah, to have all the kit be ready to go and be doing something as exciting as kayaking the whole of the River Derwent, like how mega is that? So yeah, maybe check out the route, see what it's like. We'll be there this weekend, giving it a go, giving it a film, and hopefully the full video will be out soon for you to see how we did on our canoe expedition. Anyway, I will catch you in the next video. Thank you for watching, like, subscribe, do whatever you can. That is the kit we will be taking. I'll see you next time.